I now give the floor to Her Excellency Retno Lestari Priansari Marsudi, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Indonesia. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. President, this is my last opportunity as the Foreign Minister of Indonesia to represent my country to speak before the UNGA. A decade of so many challenges, but at the same time, a decade of Indonesia many contributions in addressing global issues. One of them is Palestine. Indonesia cannot, I repeat, cannot sit back and relax, seeing the injustice that continues to be committed against the people of Palestine. Indonesia is and will always stand with the people of Palestine to attend their right to have an independent state of Palestine. As I speak now, more than 41,000 people in Gaza have been killed. Situation in West Bank, Lebanon are deteriorating. Is that, is, is that not enough? Is that not enough? Will the Security Council only take action to stop Israel atrocities when all Palestinians are displaced? Or when 100,000 Palestinians are killed? Or when a regional armed conflict breaks out? That will be too late. PM Netanyahu yesterday mentioned, and I quote, that Israel seeks peace, that Israel yearns for peace. Really? How are we supposed to believe that statement? Yesterday, while he was here, Israel conducted unprecedented massive air attack on Beirut. PM Netanyahu wants the war to continue. We must stop that. I repeat, we must stop that. We must pressure Israel to come back to a political solution for two-state solution. <laughs> Mr. President, the overwhelming majority of the UN members strongly support the two-state solution, and this is the right time to walk the talk. Recognizing the state of Palestine is the least that we can do now to give Palestinian equal footing on the world states and to exert pressure to Israel to stop their atrocities. Therefore, I urge countries that have yet to recognize the state of Palestine to do so now. If every each of us does it, for sure it will give impact. The recognition of Palestine today is an investment that will yield a more peaceful, just and human world tomorrow. Once again, Indonesia urged the permanent members of the Security Council to concretely act to immediately stop Israel from blatantly violating international law and to end Israel impunity. The mandate of the Security Council is to maintain peace, to create peace, not to maintain and prolong wars, or even worse, to support the perpetrator of atrocities. Inaction means complicity. <laughs> Colleagues, wherever Indonesia goes, we carry the voices of the global south. Indonesia started this commitment in 1955 when Indonesia hosted the Asia-Africa Conference in Bandung, Indonesia. The Bandung spirit of equality cooperation and solidarity will always be alive to inspire the global South to gain their rights, including their rights to development. That is the spirit that we need if we want to have a global leadership where moral virtues are the compass of our business. Do not worry. The principle of the UN Charter and international law under the rubble of double standard, trust deficit, 
and zero-sum game. <laughs> Mr. President, Excellencies, against these global challenges, Indonesia continues to be part of the solution. By embodying this commitment, Indonesia presidency in 2022 managed to prevent the G20 from collapsing despite deep geopolitical division. During the global pandemic, we led the establishment of the Pandemic Fund and co-chaired the COFAX AMC Engagement Group to ensure, equitable security, to, to ensure equitable access to vaccine and financial resources and to safeguard health security for all, especially for the Global South. As a member of the Human Rights Council, Indonesia continuously calls for inclusive partnership in addressing global human rights issues. And amidst regional rivalries, Indonesia pioneered the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific as a framework for concrete and inclusive cooperation. To embrace, not to contain. We have demonstrated that global leadership will never be attained through force, domination, and fear. Global leadership should be about guiding collective action by listening, empowering the collaboration, and instilling hope. This is what I say, leadership without hegemony. <laughs> Mr. President, Excellencies, to attend this vision, we must focus on three key priorities. First, advancing peace through inclusive leadership. Multilateral system should be reformed. The UNSC must be an inclusive space for peace where a wider range of voices can be heard and timely decision can be taken for our collective good. Without peace, our effort to attain global goals such as the SDGs will remain a dream without reality. Indonesia is committed to contribute to global peace by being one of the largest troops contributing countries in UN peacekeeping mission and remain firm in our proactive role to counter terrorism. We also strive to ensure that peace we are promoting will be inclusive by advancing the women peace and security agenda, contributing to women empowerment, including pursuing equal access to education to women and girls in Afghanistan. Investing in women is investing in peace. Empowering women is empowering prosperity for all. Second, ensure a resilient future for shared prosperity. Indonesia believes in a future where all nations thrive no matter how big or small. But the global pandemic and impact of climate change has shown us all that to prosper together, we must work together. Therefore, the implementation of the Pact for the Future is important to accelerate the achievement of the SDGs and scale up partnership and sustainable development even beyond 2030. At the same time, geopolitical tensions have also significantly impacted global supply chain, affected the development trajectory of the global south, many of whom remain unable to freely exercise their right to development. In this context, Indonesia has taken proactive steps. Earlier this month, Indonesia held the second Indonesia-Africa Forum to enhance cooperation in international supply chains and connectivity and build collaboration in preparing for the future challenges. Indonesia also hosted the 10 Water, World Water Forum, I repeat, the 10 World Water Forum this year. We believe that water is a crucial element for shared prosperity. And third, building bridges to foster global collaboration. Colleagues, a winner takes all. And take it or leave it mentality should no longer exist 
when collaboration is the only antidote in addressing the global challenges of today. For Indonesia, a world where the only option is us versus them will only result in the world of us or them. Global solidarity and collective responsibility is the essence of the Bandung spirit. And this spirit guided us through our G20 presidency in 2022, chairmanship of ASEAN in 2023, and continuous effort to voice the aspiration of the global South. Indonesia envisioned a world where nations collaborate together to address shared challenges, uphold international law, and protect human rights and dignity of all people. In Southeast Asia, ASEAN with 650 million people has proven that diversity can coexist with stability, peace, and prosperity. Indonesia also continues to work with ASEAN to restore peace and stability in Myanmar through implementation of the ASEAN Five Point of Consensus and to enable the safe and dignified return of the Rohingya people. Beyond ASEAN, we also continue to deepen our engagement to the Pacific region to become part and parcel of an inclusive and peaceful Indo-Pacific architecture based on the principle of solidarity, equality, and mutual respect. Mr. President, colleagues, peace, justice, and humanity will always be at the core of Indonesia foreign policy. Indonesia understands that the global leadership is not something that inherited, nor does it fall from the sky. It must be earned through our collective efforts. Rest assured that Indonesia's commitment toward common peace, common prosperity, common security will be carried out forward across Indonesia's successive administration. It is in this spirit that I'm proud to announce Indonesia candidature for a non-permanent seat of the United Nations Security Council for 2029-2029 30. This candidature reflects our deep commitment to contributing toward global peace and security. So colleagues, let us work together to build a legacy of peace for our future generation. I thank you very, very much. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Indonesia.